3D Rafiki Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be doing another Lion King design. This one is going to be for Rafiki. So this is my fourth Lion King video for this new movie that's coming out. I am so in love with The Lion King and I get to go see it in a couple days when you're sleeping. So that's pretty exciting, at least for me. I hope you guys like this little Rafiki nail as much as I do. I love Rafiki so much. I named my chameleon after him. We call him Raph all the time. So if you hear me referring to Rafiki as Raph in the video, it's just because that will probably just come out of my mouth anyway. So I hope you guys like this design as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. I'm going to begin with an overlay of a pale orange color acrylic, either pale orange or like a pale teal. Both of those look really, really nice for this guy. I wouldn't do anything too dark just because the top of his head is darker and if you used a dark color in the background it might make his head just kind of disappear. So just a nice bright or pale color is my recommendation. So just fill in that overlay like so, and after you have that done, then I'm going to encase the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure that the nail is nice and strong. And a little while ago, I got a question asking me why I always say that clear is stronger than color acrylics, and so I just wanted to go over that really quick in a more in-depth way. Um, so think of it like Legos. If you have two Legos together, Legos are the acrylic polymers, and when they get together, they form a chain. You have all these Legos stacked up in there, and a ligamer. Really strong, they attach to together, they bond really well. Now imagine that you have a piece of paper between the Legos. They might still go together, especially if you've got the big Duplo box, blocks like Melody does. They might still go together, but they're going to fall apart easier, and so all of your pigment is that color or that piece of paper that is between your Legos. So I hope that that makes sense. I know that when I initially typed it out, it was very clear and easy to understand, but now that I'm saying it, I hope that it all makes sense. So the pigment and glitter or whatever, it gets in the way of your acrylic polymers connecting and forming a really strong bond with each other. So that is why clear is stronger than the rest of the colors. All of that, like I said, I hope it makes sense. So now I filed my nail into shape. It's all ready to go. I'm going to be sculpting Mr. Rafiki with starting out the top of his face, so his brow bone and his eye area with a medium gray acrylic. After that, so he's got several different colors on his face. And instead of, I went back and forth whether I want to do a lot of it with acrylic or if I wanted to do it all with paint. And I decided to do it with acrylic. So I have just the top of his face done. Then you're going to want to add the next section of his face. So this is like his cheek area that is going to be with a really nice um, light to medium blue so fill that in and then add the bottom of his face so his lips and his chin and all of that with a tan acrylic so just bring that area down and his face isn't very it's not like it's straight up and down the angle I went for is kind of a three-quarter angle so you want to bring his face off to the side carve his smile in just like so Yep, so I, like I said, I absolutely love Rafiki, and I named my chameleon after him a couple years ago, and I have a Rafiki shirt, and this is, so, he's always been one of my favorites. So then I'm going to take, and I have some very diluted, well, very wet white acrylic, and I'm going to set that down next to his face. I'm going to take the tip of my brush after I have it kind of where I want it to go, and I'm just going to pull it out so it creates little wispy lines for his hair. Do that on both sides of his face, not all the way around the top of his head though. You want to stop right about his brow bone and not continue any more of that hair. I also added a little bit of his shoulder from the one side. Blend the white over the top of that gray. Continue for the other side. And when you're doing this part, you do want to, on the side that is more prominent on the nail, you're going to want to create a little bit where it looks like his white hair is going over his ear. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just adding a little bit of thickness so that it looks like his hair, instead of tucking it behind his ear, it's tucked in front of his ear. And then when you get to that point, his ear is going to be the same color that you used on his chin. So I've got all of his hair done, which was definitely my favorite part of this design, just laying down those beads and then playing with them to get them into that little wispy shape. But then I'm going to add a little bit more acrylic to his brow bone. He has a very prominent brow bone, as most monkeys do, so you're going to want to Add all, all of that extra acrylic there to really make that stick out. That's what you want to stick out the most on the snail. And then add his little ear off to the side with that same tan color. His The shape of his ear kind of reminds me of like a taco, I think is what I think of when I look at it. Then I'm going to sculpt his nose. And I used kind of a corally orange coppery color. 
And so just continue that down. If you don't have such a color, you can just use red and then highlight it with orange. That would also work. In my case, I used a coral color and then I shadowed it with red. So you can do it either way. It's up to you. So add the bridge of his nose. So start right underneath his brow bone and then stretch that really thin down his face and then flatten out his actual nose into kind of an arrowhead shape. Now with diluted black paint, I'm going to start doing all my outlining. I also darkened the top of his head. So I used that little place on the top of his head where I darkened kind of as my little well of paint and I kept dipping back into it to grab my acrylic paint to outline everything else. And it worked out really well, but just take, and you don't want the top of his head to be fully black, which is why I used diluted color for it. And as it dries, it doesn't stay quite as dark looking as it is right now. So you have to have all of those little outlines done, add some stripes across the blue area of his cheeks, outline the different sections of his face, and then I'm going to take a darker blue and I'm going to darken in his eye area. So underneath the brow bone, but from the blue area of his face to the brow bone is where you're going to want to place that darker shade of blue. Just like so. He's so colorful and so, I don't know, serene, I guess. That's why I named my chameleon after him is because he's just so colorful and I figured it was appropriate. And then, like I said, I added some shadows on his nose with red. I'm going to add a couple little highlights on the white of his hair with a very, very light gray. And then I'm going to take that very, very light gray and add a highlight across his brow bone. I did dilute it some, so it wasn't quite as uh, pungent, <laughs> I suppose. And then I'm going to take and outline his eyes with some black. And against that very dark blue, those black outlines aren't really all of that visible, but they will definitely help you in placing the yellow of his eyes. And also add a couple little black lines for his forehead wrinkles, some nostrils, kind of define his smile a little bit, and add a few black lines here and there wherever you think they are needed to further your outlining. Then fill in his eyes with yellow, a very nice bright yellow. And his eyes aren't circular shape, they are flat or flat-ish on the bottom. So they have a nice top curve on them, and then they sort of flat out so they're parallel with the line of the blue of his face. On that area of the blue of his face, take a brighter, lighter shade of blue and add little highlight lines between the black outlines you did on them. I go through and touch up his yellow eyes just a little bit more, and then add the black pupils. You can also, I re-outlined them a little bit because my lines didn't turn out quite the way I wanted. Then add those little teeny tiny dots for his black pupils, and then you can add a little white dot for a, a reflection in his eyes as well. I always like to do that, even if it's not initially in the character, the original character. I like to add a little highlight in the eyes. Then I'm going to apply some gel sealer over the background to make that nice and shiny, and some matte top coat over Rafiki. I am absolutely in love with this guy. This nail I'm going to turn into a ring, so I turned my Simba nail and the Timon and Pumbaa nail into earrings, and then I have a Rafiki ring, so I am all set. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do, and please take me in any recreations. I would absolutely love to see them, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!